<laughs> What's the date? What date is it? Does it matter? It does. July 8th. Thank you. Oh, shit. It's my buddy's birthday today. Yeah, matters, Matt. <laughs> Thank you. What's up, Bulls Nation? Yeah. And welcome into the CHGO Bulls post game show. We're back to post game shows, guys. Mm. Presented to you by Points Bet. Mm. Don't forget that promo code CHGO when you sign up to live your bet life. Yours. I'm Peck. I'm on Twitter, Bulls underscore Peck. That's Big Dave. He is at Bow, B A W L Sports. Will the Go Gottlieb at Won't Gottlieb on Twitter. What we are doing? CHGO underscore Bulls hanging out here, back at the All City House. We are here with our guy, our producer Kale, hanging Kale! out behind the scenes. And he doesn't eat kale. He does not. Dang um, it! But you know what he is going to eat right What's now? That? A lot of Bulls hype. <laughs> Bulls win. Starting in a for thriller. One hundred ninety nine is the final yes. in overtime. Yes. Summer league free basketball. Yes. And it did not look like that at halftime. After that second quarter, I was like, "Oh, this is getting ugly." The Bulls scrape and claw their way back. Um, they force OT with an epic breakaway dunk from Marco. Yes. And I feel like Marco is where we need to start, gentlemen. Um, but first, mm-hmm. let's just get this out of the way. You guys were the two who were credentialed for today's game. Mm-hmm. Sitting directly in front of you, Jerry West, the logo. logo. Rod Thorne, former Bulls GM, mm-hmm. basically like the god of the NBA. Yes. And then Mark Cuban came over and said, what's up? Yeah. And then Sean Marion came over and said, what's up? Yeah. And I was just looking over at you guys from my seat behind the bench being like, oh, my God. What are they talking about? Yeah. What were they talking about? Were you eavesdropping? I tried, but billionaires whisper. Ah, uh, yeah. And that's, that's, what I, that's what I learned <laughs> today is that billionaires definitely whisper. Because when Sean Marion was over there talking, I could hear it. When Fisdale was over there talking, I could hear the conversation. When Cuban and West and Thorne were talking, I couldn't hear anything because I was so hyper focused on Marco Simonovic <laughs> and true. Jalen Terry. This is true. You can tell who the professional is <laughs> and who the guy is who is just happy to be there. Yeah. And we were sitting there. with the legend Sam Smith. Sam yes. Smith. And Darnell Mayberry. Shout out to our guy Darnell Mayberry. Yeah, Mayberry I, I got to wave at him from across the court. Yeah, man. It was cool, man. And Jamal good, also. Good yes. There. It was awesome, man. Like, yeah. So, okay. I know Bulls fans were basically looking at two players primarily coming into this year's Summer League. They're True. looking at Dalen Terry, the 18th yeah. pick. True. And they're looking at Marco Simonovic, second round pick from two years ago, who spent most of his time last year with Windy City. Can he take the next step, especially considering the fact that the Bulls have a lot of not so great options in the front court behind Vooch yeah. right now? And please, Patrick Williams, don't get hurt again. Hell, 27 points, 13 boards. He was doing it all over the floor and some pretty epic stuff, including uh, Kale, do you have that that and one video of of Marco his and one bucket from OT that we can throw up there because oh, yes, more of it. got more the more building of it. lit needs this just excitement abound from that young man Marco man mm. Mm, mm, you know what was great about mm. that and and I mentioned this to the DNVR crew shout out to them shout out to PHNX also who are over there representing right now but I thought the cool thing was. When that happened, you realized how many Chicago Bulls fans there were oh. at that stadium at that moment and at that time. Because I don't think it clicked for me that it was Until that Until I saw many. that Carlos Boozer jersey. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Until I saw the Carlos Boozer jersey and him getting a standing ovation. And yeah, just how crazy they went when that happened. Because it felt like a game after that when that occurred, man. Can we just talk quickly about like the lead up to the game? Mm. So typically, when you go to these events, you have to like go get your media credential, which we did. <laughs> but there was an hour long line that we had to wait through, there was. and we got there early so that we could like get in the gym, talk to some people, get situated before the game. And we ended up missing like the first five minutes, so we missed like Mark. Marco started like three for three or something. Yeah, yeah, we, we yeah. missed that. Yeah, we did. Um, so we walked down and we're walking along the the sideline, and Lonzo Ball just crosses us, and Dave's like, "Oh, what's up, Lonzo Ball?" <laughs> And then, then we kind of started getting into the game. So, uh, it started. I was like not very impressed with Marco. We had kind of a lame yeah. first half, with yeah. the exception of those first couple buckets. And then in the second half and overtime, he just really turned it on. That was amazing. Yeah, I completely agree. It was one of the things I wrote, I wrote down watching it. Um, Mark, Mark, I didn't like how he. I wanted him to finish stronger when he was going up for these buckets. I wanted some dunks out of him. And he has a game about himself where he goes up more so finesse. You know what I'm saying? And tries to 
do something athletic and smooth. You know what I mean? When he's going up, well, I just wanted him to be rugged and finish it, right. dunk on somebody because you put on 800 pounds and you're strong. And I need you to let people know to him, impose your will on some folks. But I guess that'll come. You know, the fact that he was able to still score, you know, and still finish through contact, which he did a lot of today. He did he did a lot of finishing through contact as the and one that you just uh right. we just saw right there. But yeah, and he <laughs> and he let people know that, yeah, I've been working out. That was also a great part too. Like, yeah, I've I've definitely lifted some weights and doing it right in front of uh the trio, right in front of Billy Donovan, right in front of uh Mark Eversley and AK. He did it right in front of him, man. It was great. Was it amazing. was awesome. You can't make that stuff up. We've been talking about how many pounds of muscle Marco has put yeah. on for like the last week. Yeah. Yeah. And then he comes out and does that. Yeah, man. Uh, Ming's in the comments saying Marco is going to be a key player this season. I think that's what everyone's wondering. Is he has he taken a step where he can actually contribute to the the real bulls, not the baby bulls this right. upcoming season? Right. Jello in the comments saying Marco, uh, much greater sign than Drummond or Bradley. <laughs> we'll see. Then Bradley. Uh, Evan <laughs> saying Marco has soft hands and plays with some good patience. He does have soft hands. Um, yeah. yeah and, and like you said, I mean, finishing through contact, that's something that we need to see from him. Yeah. We did see it in the second half and then into OT. And then we got the flex from Marco. The, two the two-armed flex. It's amazing. And it was like he did that right in front of. AK and Eversley and Billy, who were right sitting there. baseline under the hoop. Right there. And we asked him after the game if he like did that on purpose or Flex. knew about it. And he was like, No, I didn't even like I blacked out. I <laughs> and and they Daylon Terry was like, Yeah, he did it on purpose. Right, he, right. He did it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> I love Daylon Terry. Yeah. He definitely said that, man. It was it was great. Like just to see him to show that kind of emotion. Because I like that kind of stuff in our young uh, players. Because the Bulls don't have that. You know what I mean? Like, they're a bunch of cool, smooth guys. They don't have that kind of thing. I didn't know Marco had that in him. So, yeah. again, I'm going to credit Daylon Terry with that kind of stuff, man. Bringing that out of him, man. So, yeah, it was, it was just great to see. It really was. Yeah. Uh, Dontavious in the comments saying, I like this side of Marco showing so much emotion. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. And he did it twice. Because, remember, in the overtime, like I said, when he got down, he was chest bumping with Patrick Williams. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Those guys, like, he was... It was like, yes, you know what I'm saying? More of this, dude. Where's this guy been? I like this dude right here. So, yeah, He more just of seems that. so much more comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Like, with his body, with the way that he plays, with his English. Yes. Like, just being in this league and understanding the pace. Uh, I think he looked a lot more comfortable, especially in the second half, and I thought that was a theme with Dalen as well, mm -hmm. where they, they weren't trying to, like, force their way to the basket so much. It was like they were just playing basketball. Yeah. They were just moving the ball, getting to the rim a little bit more easily, kicking it out. And yeah, Marco really, when he stopped trying to like create for himself so much, that's when the game really started flowing for him. True. And he didn't make any of his threes, but he was 10 of 19 from the field and seven of eight from the line. So that's like, that's amazing efficiency. Right. I, so, you know, you're talking 10 of 16 from inside the three point line. And obviously you want to see the three point shot come around as well. Sure. But too. if it's not fallen, go to the rack. Yeah. Go to the rack. And he did that. And think about that. Like, because those threes uh, will be a difference from him being a, a 20 and 10 guy to a 30 and 10 guy. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. No, no. Okay. <laughs> Do you understand? I'm talking about this game, bro. And what he yeah, did. okay. Yeah. So I'm not talking about as he comes into this season. Okay. Please. <laughs> it's not no, what I'm I was saying. saying. I'm I was, saying Marco is Shaq. Before, That's not what I'm saying. Before you get. You Clearly, guys, he would have had 30. If he hits those threes, he would have had like 30 something points, man. Right. That's what I'm saying. A 20 and 10 guy to a 30 and 10 before guy. Before you guys got Relax. back to the house, I was telling Kale, you know, just because Marco got drafted by AK in the second round after playing four mega overseas, yeah. a lot of Bulls fans were like, Nicole Jokic? Nicole Jokic? And we're like, Pump the brakes. Marco Relax. is no <laughs> Nicole Jokic, but Relax. he doesn't need to be. It's can he be a useful member of the 15 man squad? Because Correct. I think that's what was frustrating a lot of Bulls fans last season. It's like, why did you bring this guy over and give him a guaranteed spot if Billy took one look and was like, not ready? Yeah. Not ready. So, you know, he spent a season working on his game in the summer league, spent a season working on his body. And like it, it shows. Yeah, uh, and and maybe that's actually a piece that Billy will actually will be able to use next season. I, step, I hope so. It's a step in in the right progression, right? Like he's playing in the Adriatic League, which is you know produced a lot of good NBA players, but it's definitely nowhere close to the NBA, let alone you know something like the G League. So he transitions over. He's got to like 
find a home in a new country and mm-hmm. all this stuff. And he starts playing really well in the G League. And it's just one more step. And now he's doing it in Summer League. And hopefully he'll be able to do it at the NBA level as well. Um, we'll have plenty of time to like dissect the the center rotation. But like if he keeps putting up numbers like this, he's going to play. He's going to play. Yeah, he's going to get an opportunity to get out there and, and do something with this team, which is, I'm sure, all that he wants right now. Because he talked about it a lot, just how driven he is to actually get out there on the floor and to be, you know what I'm saying, with these teammates, with these guys during the season. So that, maybe that's part of the other reason they had him on the bench last year was to kind of develop that hunger as well. You know what I mean? And Billy Donovan not giving him anything. Like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. See, you're here. That's nice. But I'm not going <laughs> to give you anything, bro. Just watch, learn it, get it together, and see what that kind of – if that lights a fire inside of him. And it feels like it kind of did. And with the guaranteed contracts, we talk about this with Io or – any of the younger guys, like you want to get them into your system and try to develop them into the players that you want to put into your style of play. And so, you know, you can talk about whether or not that was a smart decision, but he's now had time to develop in the G League with the Windy City Bulls. And right. now, you know, he'll have a chance to do it at the NBA level. Like it takes time. Yeah. And mm-hmm. he's definitely a little bit older than most second year players. He's 22, but. You know, it's it's progress. Yeah. And also, one final shout out to Marco. He executed that last trip to the free throw line flawlessly. Yes. I mean, I know yes. it's only summer league, but it's OT. The game is tied with you know fractions of a second left. It takes stones to step up and make that free throw. That was the one free throw he missed. Drills the first one and then knows to purposefully shank the second one. Mm-hmm. So that the Mavs can't get any kind of organized attempt with 0.7 seconds to get some miracle shot off. Like, he did that flawlessly. So and good what for did, him. Uh, and what did John Bryant say after the game, Dave? He said that he got the word from Paul Miller, the offensive coordinator, yep. and they basically just decided as a group. Like, they're, that was what the play was going to be. Mm-hmm. And it just seems like they have a really cool relationship between the coach and Billy, who's kind of like overseeing it, but not stepping on any toes. And then this staff of young guys who are just having a chance to make a name for themselves. So I thought that was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Shout out Marco Simonovic. Shout Marco out you, hours in full effect game, in sir. Vegas. Excellent. 27 and 13. Excellent Give it game. up for the big man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Will, you tease a little bit. We'll talk about Dale and Terry coming up Yo. next. But first, Big Dave. Yes, sir. Give the people what they want. Thank you, Will. Oh, Vegas Will is the best. <laughs> the best way to support CHGO is to download that points bet app and use that code CHGO. When you sign up, dang it. Because if you do that right now, you'll get those two, count them, one, two risk-free bets up to $2,000. But that's not it. If you make a $50 or more first-time deposit, guess what you're going to get? You'll receive that free CHGO membership, which unlocks all of that awesome web content and that writing from this man over here, which is going to be quite awesome. I got to do something. Oh, and <laughs> I got to get to work, guys. You got to get to work. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll get a free T-shirt of your choice from that CHGO locker. That's 2,000 in free bets, a free CHGO membership, and a free T-shirt of your choice from that CHGO locker like this one right here. Mm. But you got to get your own. Hey, all for making a $50 or more first-time deposit with points, man. It's your home for live in play betting, and it just got even better. Is your favorite team primed for a comeback like those Chicago Bulls in the Summer League? <laughs> you see an edge of the game that you're watching? Guess what? Don't just watch it. Bet along live, more live betting, more live markets, and faster live cash outs. That is faster live cash outs because it's about that paper. Follow along with your bets the moment they hit and stay. In the live action, all game long, all game. So what the hell are you waiting for, huh? Huh? I don't know. It's time to elevate your live betting game. Because once that game starts, y'all, you don't just bet. Will the thrill tell them what they do. You live your bet life. Ah, oh, use that promo code CHGO. Delightful. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was telling these guys. You were on one right after that we Bulls went. win. <laughs> dude. <laughs> This is this is normal. This dude sitting in front of me was on one after the Bulls won. He clearly put a lot of money on the Bulls money line. And as they made that comeback and then won an OT, he was losing his shit. And I wanted to follow him wherever he was going. <laughs> to gamble? Because he was, first he was going to cash that ticket. Right. And right. then he was probably going to go have himself a lot of fun. <laughs> Um, all right, so Dalen Terry, yeah. summer league debut. Yes. Um, I thought he looked a little skittish out of the gate, maybe a little bit of nerves. Um, but what he also looked was happy. Yeah. Uh, Kale, do you have that uh, photo 
Courtesy of our guy, Ryan Green, a.k.a. RG, who was also there at the stadium he was killing doing it. work amazing, today. Bro. What killing. a high. I mean, and, and so, Will, I saw you also tweeted about this. Dale and Terry, never not smiling. He's never not smiling. Like, he's he, like, just the happiest somebody, dude smile. to be playing NBA Summer League right Throw now. Throw full court assist. Smile. <laughs> Done. Smile. <laughs> like, even if he, like, gets beat and gives up a layup, he smiles. He's like, all right, next time. I yeah. got you next time. Yeah, he's just – I. I talk, and this is what I was in Will's era a lot about it was Dalen Terry and just the little things he was doing on the floor, the tiny things that the Bulls, again, didn't have previously. Just a guy who was always talking, first of all, always talking, calling out the plays or whether he's uh, encouraging his teammates, high fiving them, bringing in the huddle, bringing everybody together. He was always talking. When he was on that bench, and I asked Will, had he ever heard a Bulls bench loud before in summer league? And he was like, not that he could recall. Mm -hmm. You could just see them, how loud they were when he was on the bench with them. He's the first one up, cheering everybody on, man, getting everybody into it, which in turn rubbed off on Marco. Because then Marco's up yelling and getting everybody into it. So he's bringing out other sides of personalities of guys that might want to be that way, but just aren't that way. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a skill. <laughs> that is a skill to have that. So I, I like that, that he was doing that. The point guardsmanship of his game was definitely on display. I love when you say points, point guards. <laughs> I love it. It's a thing, man. It's a I thing. I love that word. Yeah, man. It, it, it was on display. Just just the passing ability, the cross-court passing ability that he possesses is, is really, really good, man. But I, I like the fact that he's fiery. You know what I mean? Like, he got to talk with the refs a little bit, too. I can see some technicals in his future in the league, which is awesome. I don't have a problem with he that. He got one. Yeah. In a summer league game. On a How dunk. do you get a tech trash in a call summer to league game? Rigged. Trash call. Rick for bro. the ratings. Nope. <laughs> Rick for the ratings. And, and yeah, man, but I, I just think he's that culture player for the Chicago Bulls that they haven't had yet. And I'm, I'm just happy he's here, man. Like that little stuff he does, it means a lot. It really does. Uh, final stat line for Dale and Terry nine points on three of seven, five boards, six dimes, also committed six fouls. It was a foul fest. Malcolm Hill had seven. I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, ten fouls to foul out. Yeah. M. Bingham Jr. on the maps. I don't even know his, his real full name. Put Sorry eight about of them that. Had Mr. eight. Mr. Bingham had eight <laughs> personal fouls. That's impressive. Put in eight of them things, man. He was on it. So it, it definitely looked up close like Dalen's handles need some yes. work. As, as you're talking yes. about his point guardsmanship. Yes, definitely. Um, I love that word. <laughs> We could just sit here and say point guardsmanship over and over, it and will will be will. <laughs> Can't help it, love man. Can't help it. No, I just love that word. <laughs> uh, but what I did like immediately was you saw the energy on the defensive end, and yeah. you saw some of these tools he has, the physical tools and some of the mechanics to make game-changing plays on defense. Yeah, yeah and I, that was the other thing I wrote down, contact seeking. Like mm -hmm. He seeks out contact uh, when he goes to the bucket, man. He's looking for it. And it, that'll get him to the line now that he's got to work on his free throws if he wants to really hurt teams with that. But it's just the fact that he can slow the game down. Anytime you can draw fouls, it slows the game down. And sometimes you're going to need that, uh, whether your guys might need a breather or whether the other team just went on a 6-0 run or whatever. It's handy. It comes in handy. But, yeah, we will especially – we talked about his handles a lot mm -hmm. and just how much he worked on it. And you were pointing out certain things he was doing with the basketball while he was doing it. Yeah, I think – Right now, I said this with Marco too. Like he he seemed to be like forcing the issue a little bit in the first half, and I think in the second half, and John Bryan said this after the game too. It was just like got him the ball a little bit more, let him run a little bit more pick and roll, see if the game slows down at all. And I think it really did. Um, he the two things that really stood out to me as far as things that he needs to work on are his handles and his strength. I think mm. he struggled to get all the way to the rim, uh, got the ball stripped away a couple of times. That's okay. I want to see him, see what he's able to do getting to the basket and putting pressure on the rim. Um, but that's like a big area of weakness for me, hmm. especially true when he's only taking one three-pointer and passing hmm. up a couple of open ones. So there's a lot he needs to work on offensively, um, but you really saw what he's able to do passing the ball, his vision, um, just the delivery of his passes was really impressive. But when he gets you know cut off, it's the behind the back dribble to his left hand and then it's he stops and he's got to reset and start driving again. And so he'll he'll smooth all that stuff out when he becomes a better ball handler. But right. I think that's really what's going to unlock his game is being able to beat guys off the dribble one on one and then 
help comes and he'll be able to utilize that passing a little bit better. And as uh, Windy City Vids in the comments pointed out, he did also have six turnovers. So it's, mm-hmm. you know, you get that like, with, with the younger guard, you you see the the potential with the passing and, and his court vision and some of the crafty things he can do, but you also see the loose handles and those loose handles lead to a lot of turnovers. And you, I almost think you want to see a lot of turnovers for a young guard mm. in summer league. Just like, Go out there and see what you can do. Like, get creative. Try to make some passes. Get crazy. Some, some of them, yeah, exactly. Some <laughs> of them get tipped away. Uh, he got his pocket picked a couple times on some drives. That's less good. But when you're, like, trying to make impressive passes, like driving, and then you throw something across the court to the opposite corner, like, that's – you want to be able to see that because now you, you – if you have stuff, you can mold it and shape it into the player you want. But if it's just not there, then you, there's nothing to work with. Yeah. So I, I love seeing him experiment with his game and seeing how far he can expand it. Yeah. Uh, in the comments, Evan saying, Terry seems like he needs to play off the ball and cut, which he can let then leverage his passing while cutting and drawing defenders. I, I, maybe there is some truth to, to Dale and Terry being a, a more lethal piece role-playing piece at the beginning of his NBA career as a guy playing much more off the ball than on the ball like and summer league is a great venue for working out the kinks of your yeah. your ball handling issues and things like that and yeah, seeing true. what you can do handling the ball and trying to be a, a primary playmaker and you know he did have six assists I think he was he, he was second on the Bulls today with with six times but I think his his game right now not in summer league but when you jump to the NBA I absolutely agree with Evan like it's he's probably going to be able to do do more positively off the ball. And some guys are built to be really good role players. Some are built to be volume scorers. Mm-hmm. Some are built to be Luka Doncic type of like offensive initiators. Mm-hmm. Dalen, I don't think is going to be Luka, right? Like he's just not able to score like that. And that's totally fine. But when you put the ball in his hands and say, go produce all the offense in a summer league setting, it may not always work. We saw that with Pat sometimes last summer. We mm-hmm. saw that with Io. That's just kind of how it goes. You want to see what they're able to do. But in the NBA, he's definitely going to be playing more off ball, cutting, uh, being that connective piece where he's just pushing the extra pass around. Um, But I think this is really good experience for his development in terms of, well, maybe we can push him a little bit further and Mm -hmm. put him on the ball a little bit more. Let him run secondary pick and rolls after a DeMar kickout or something like that. Yeah. And and one more thing on the the little stuff that he does. If you go to the Bulls uh, Twitter account, Mm -hmm. they put up a video of the team in the locker room after that game was over. It's basically all Dale and Terry talking. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Re- talking about the team and, and the things and how he said it. Like when he was talking about Marco, he said, I ain't never seen nobody get rebound like that back to back to back like that. And that encouraged me to get out there and work harder and do things like that. Dude, yes, I want more of that in my locker room. You know what I'm saying? I need, I need more of that kind of talk from somebody in the locker room, man. He just – he really galvanizes the team, man. And a, and a team like that, a young team like that, Man, bringing that over to these guys who are, who are the veterans and all these guys here right now, that can't do nothing but help. Um, what did uh, did you guys hear from John Bryant after the game or no? Yeah. Did he have any thoughts on Dalen's game? He did. He did. Uh, he spoke very highly <laughs> of, of, of Dalen's game and how he got down, man. Um, he was just as impressed as we were, I yeah. think. You know what I'm saying? While he was watching him. And he talked about you know putting the ball in his hands and trusting him. Uh, with the basketball and allowing him to be that point guard and run the team uh, in that kind of way. And that's for me, That again, that also says a lot. That's not just saying because you're our number one pick, I'm going to let you run the team and, you know, do what you want. He, The way he spoke was like, no, nah, bro, I really do trust this dude to do this. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? To handle and run this team. And But, yeah, he was. He talked about those little things as well, you know what I'm saying, that he did, uh, Dalen Terry. But, yeah, he, is, did I miss anything? I'm sure I missed something. I think the one thing – that stood out to me was there were a couple of questions about, well, is he a one? Is he a wing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And he just kind of said he's a playmaker. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I really like that. I, I don't think we as Bulls like analysts or fans or whatever should look at this team and say, well, Alex Caruso is going to be our one because he's the shortest. And then Lonzo Ball. And then like it doesn't work that way. you got to have playmakers at every position. And that's why I really love this pick is because whether it was going to be EJ, EJ Liddell or Blake Wesley or Tari Eason or whoever, like you need a basketball player who can do multiple things as far as playmaking for himself or others. And I think Dalen, like I said, he's got to really work on getting to the rim and putting pressure on defenses that way. But like he can really pass it. And I think that you can never have too much of that. So you're saying, Will, that he's a hooper. He's a hooper. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. (laughs) He's a hooper. 
Oh, uh, no, no, uh, no, no bald headed menace sightings at, uh, at the venue today. That's a shame. Oh. <laughs> He's coaching the Olympics. Uh, he, he told me, he reminded me. Coaching yesterday. the Olympics. He's there. Those are big air quotes on both of those words. Don't put me in this mood. I'm in a good mood. Pulls blood <laughs> in overtime. I'm not going there with this dude, man. It was awesome, man. Shout out to those guys. They the, played well. The other thing that I noticed in you know seeing him up close, uh, as far as Dale and Terry is, I like I I didn't necessarily think he was bigger like body wise, mm. but today I noticed just how wiry his frame He's is. Very wiry, yeah. and like I don't know if that's what his body type needs to be. Or as you were talking about earlier, Will, as far as just like being able to, you know, you know, do some work through the trees, getting into the paint and maybe finishing at the rim a little bit better. If, like his teammate Marco, he needs to hit the gym a little bit. What do you think about the, the wiry frame and, and how it could affect his game at the NBA level? He definitely needs to add some weight. There were I think he had like two or three offensive fouls where he just tried to barrel in yeah. and just put his shoulder into somebody's chest and it's like that's the only way he's getting an advantage, and obviously it's an illegal way to get an advantage, so you can't do it. But I do think, like, watching him defend Jaden Hardy, and we should talk about his defense a little bit here, he was really good at, like, getting skinny over screens and yeah. keeping Hardy in front of him and forcing contested tough shots. Like, Hardy is a tough shot maker. Yeah. He was making some Woo. of them. And he, he Shout played out awesome. to Hardy. But, uh, but Dalen and Justin Lewis both defended him really well, I thought. Yeah, yeah Justin Lewis, that, that, that's a guy that definitely stood out for me. Uh, I thought he played really, really exceptional. I thought he played very, very well. Very tough inside. Um, wasn't scared inside. You know, he did a lot of yelling, which was also great. And then we all know how excited I got when I saw him yelling at the rims. I'm like, yes! I, dude, I, he had to rein himself in. Bro, I had that moment. You know how you had that moment where you're sitting in the press box and you just kind of fan out because you forget you're sitting oh, in the yeah, press box? Oh, yeah, sure. Because we've done that. You For know what sure. I'm saying? Oh, my God. Are we you kidding me? Dude, I, I did it today. In the summer league. I, was, oh. I was like, that's how you do it, Lewis. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. My dad. Yeah. Our, my See, dad. that's why I gave you the second credential <laughs> behind Will. Method to the man. So that I could go be in the stands right. acting a fool. Right. Which I absolutely was while the Bulls were making that comeback. <laughs> I, I could not. No man. cheering in the press box. Oh, man. A, it, was, it was tough. It uh, was but tough. To, to your point on Lewis, and I thought I saw this. Yeah, here it is in the comments. The Bullseye Insight saying Justin Lewis didn't show a lot. But I oh, like his game a lot. Like I so, I, I think I know what they're trying to say, though, which is like he at no point looks like the guy who was taking over the game. Right. But he did little things throughout the game that I thought were helpful. Yeah, he was role player stuff. Yeah. That, that I saw him doing that I like the toughness that he showed going inside and, and being strong and being big inside was, was important. Like in, in the first seven minutes, he had four points and rebound and an assist. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? In the first four minutes that he played. You know what I mean? And that's the kind of stuff I like. Like. Like, I'm not wanting him to get, you know, 25 and 12. That's not what I'm looking for. But the fact that he wasn't scared, he was taking threes. I was like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They need like, somebody you know, to do that. But that's what I'm saying. I and like that. they need that. somebody that size to do that. Right. Yeah. Six, I, was seven, like, I love seven, that that dude yes. is taking those. He went over two, but I'm glad that he took them. It and was he confident well. shots. Yeah. He shoots, like, it looks good, and he shot without any hesitation. Yeah. They need somebody who's that size. Yeah, I like that. Do that. I, like I thought that. he defended really well. Uh, he had that really nice back cut for a dunk. Ooh, yeah. He's just like, you know, the box score numbers weren't that great. That's fine. Like he was just out there making plays. And I thought he, I think he's going to be a player. Yeah. I just, I think he's going to be a player. Yeah. I think he needs just a little more tweaking on it, but I, I agree with Will though. I think he's going to be a player, but he has some stuff I just liked that he did. And I'm like, yeah, good. That's, I'm, I need more of that on my team. And that's kind of how I looked at him. You know what I mean? Like you're undrafted coming in. So I'm not like, okay, where's your 28? You know what I mean? Like, where's your super three-pointer? Where's your incredible defense? You know, obviously you had those things. You might have been, you know, drafted. It was something that teams weren't feeling. Regardless of what it was, I just wanted to see how he worked with the team. You know what I'm saying? And how he stood out. Is he a guy that still needs a little more polish in the G League? You know what I'm saying? Is he a guy that still needs a little more polish somewhere else? You know what I mean? But Or can he just be on the team and be sitting on the bench? We'll see. But I liked his game, and I like what I saw from him, man. I think... I think he did very well. Uh, the Bullseye Insight following up, talking about Justin's uh, like half-spin step back um, and uh, Mr. Pitt Steelers for life. What are you doing in here? Steelers fan slash Bulls fan? Get out of here. That's crazy talk. You can stay. Said, uh, yes, that spin move was sweet. Um, yeah. Like, again, he didn't show anything that was super wow. Yeah. I just thought he put 
a little bit of his stamp on that game in a lot of different ways. And Bulls fans saw that that's, that's going to be one of the two-way guys this season. So, you know, if, as it did last year, you are in a bind and you're Billy Donovan saying, I'm running out of bodies, you would like those two-way players to be able to play at the high level if and when they're called upon. Right, right, right. You just want them to perform when your number's called up, which is your the issue people had with Marco. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Last year. When which is like, that. he wasn't even on a two-way. It was right. like, this dude has a roster spot. Right, right. And right. he's just sitting here. Yeah, so. And I would not be surprised if at some point Justin Lewis is elevated from a two-way contract to an NBA contract. Wow. I think he could be a real impact player. Mm. Maybe not like right away, but... He, he the, the Bulls, he like put his stamp on this game in a way that the Bulls really need somebody to do that. Mm-hmm. And I and the size and like the body, yeah. they just need a guy that big who can do to, who can do a role player's job. Uh, Travis in the comments, not a believer, saying he's getting cut with the haircut emoji. Um, I I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah, I think he's going to hold on one of those two way spots. I think so, man. Um, shout out also, we'll and I saw somebody in the comments mention that we needed to shout him out, Malcolm Hill, who was mm. second on the Bulls uh, scoring-wise with 18 mm-hmm. on four of six and a very efficient eight of ten at the free throw line. Mm. We talked about him a little bit yesterday, a guy who played a handful of games for the Bulls, speaking of guys who were called upon into active duty last season. Um, anything in particular, uh, obviously getting to the free throw line, but beyond that, um, what did you think about Malcolm Hill today? Uh, his activity on defense for me is the first thing I a think. Too, of. too active. There. Yes. Seven fouls. <laughs> a little too active, but obviously. But but he was active for sure. Um, and he was t- he was taking it on. It's the best way I could say it. Uh, one, those one on ones that Hardy had, a lot of them were with Malcolm Hill. Um, even those ones that fit at the end of the game in that fourth quarter where a lot of them were with uh, Malcolm Hill, and he won a lot of those. You know what I'm saying? Now Hardy, he, he was killing them on a lot of those too, man. Don't get that mistaken. That dude is a – oh, my God. He's a bucket, bro, for real. But, but yeah, I, I like – the defense is what stood out to me um, the most and his energy as well. And uh, Coach talked about him as well, uh, how impressed he was with his energy uh, with Malcolm Hill. But that's what I liked, man, uh, what he did in that sense. I didn't even realize he was that efficient from the line. I, I really wasn't Eight even looking 10. at that. Yeah, I really wasn't even looking at that with him, man. I was just looking at his activity – on the floor because when the ball when there was a loose ball or something happening he was the one on the floor diving for it trying to get it and doing all that little dirty work stuff that that i love so much so yeah i I like that aspect uh, of his game today the bulls had basically no one that could create an advantage one-on-one in this game like it was kind of surprising how few uh, like just how little offensive creation there was i thought he was able to give you a little something Mm. and the free throw attempts kind of speak to that so uh, he's definitely, you know, he was a two-way player last year. Yeah. We'll see if he produces. There is a point of clarification, though. Sure, I'm seeing in the comments, and the Bulls tweeted this out last night or sent a sent a note, and so I tweeted it out. Um, but there's a clarification about the contracts for uh, Freedom and for Malcolm Hill. Right. Okay. So, so uh, Justin Lewis is the one two-way player who the Bulls currently roster right now. The other two guys, Malcolm. And, and Javon uh, Freeman Liberty and Javon Freeman Liberty are both signed, but are not necessarily on two ways. Okay. So that that puts the Bulls at sixteen. Somebody's going to get cut, but those guys are under contract right now with the Bulls. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, Aiden, Aiden in the comments wondering why yeah. uh, Javon Freeman Liberty it was very uh, over Malcolm. Very Hill. cryptic press release from the Bulls. Right. I'm, it was I'm strange. Glad we got that sorted out. So it could end up being could just one of up, those two, or neither, or neither. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, speaking of which, I don't know if we mentioned this yesterday, but that uh, TPE did officially expire yesterday. Yeah. So yeah, anybody a hoping of... for a roster shakeup in the form of bringing somebody in on the TPE, not going to happen. Nope, not going down that way. I was just going to say a couple of like roster um, sort of admin stuff. Breaking news? No breaking no, news today. Okay. Just just slight <laughs> small updates. Okay. Go One... bomb! <laughs> <laughs> One of them is what you just mentioned, the, the trade exception for Daniel Tice expired. The other is the details of Zach Levine's contract came out, and um, I need to go find it right now because it's not in front of me, but I believe it was fully guaranteed, um, no injury protections, and 15% trade kicker mm. if he gets traded. So 
They give him the full everything. Full gave everything. Him the full dose. You got it all, man. And congratulations to you, sir, for getting all of that. Hey, man. Zach Levine. Yes, sir. Ha- had to rep the Zach and today. And he had to. announced that his wife is pregnant. So yes. he's just winning. That, I saw that on Twitter today. All kinds of W's, man. Baby Zach on the way. Baby Zach. Do, 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 do. Mm. Um, <laughs> has anyone broken it to Romina yet? That that she's preg- uh, uh That's a good point. Which, I mean, if I, don't wanna, if, me. I don't want to be the one that does yeah, that. I, I mean, to do it. well, if if we're breaking it now, sorry, Romina. You know, we got nothing but love for you, and you could be devastated by this news. If anyone out there really wanted to be Zach Levine's baby mama, it's our friend Romina. Well, it's wife. She wanted to be wife. You yeah, know what I'm saying the one is is for him. But yeah, but, but she still got that love for him, man. That would never change. That I feel like there. she led with. The aggressive, like, she didn't want to just be his wife. Yeah, but, you know, it, it started with what he did on the court. Right. You know what I'm saying? And he transferred. <laughs> the, so I'm saying when that didn't work out, that love of what he did on the court is still uh, there. You know what I'm saying? That will never dissipate. Alex in the comments there. saying, she knows. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry, Romina. <laughs> Nothing but love for you. Uh, all right. So before we wrapped up, we did want to kind of talk a little bit more about the the people who were at this summer league Bulls Mavs game, the there were there were some people and some names in the building, including some vet Bulls who were there to support their uh, their summer league roster teammates. So we'll talk about that coming up next. But first, a shout out to our friends at Strava Craft Coffee. Strava CBD Coffee is a game changer, and it's helped thousands of people improve their overall wellness and quality of life. Strava delivers delicious, fresh roasted specialty coffee infused with organic, broad spectrum CBD. CBD from hemp doesn't make you high or give you the munchies, but it does offer real benefits that can help you feel alert and focused without those coffee jitters, live your day more balanced with less anxiety, fewer aches and pains, plus including CBD in your daily routine can even help you enjoy more restful sleep so you wake up feeling your best, ready to conquer the world like Marco Simonovic. (laughs) The best part is that Strava is all about quality. Everything is small batch, fresh, and shipped straight to your door. Strava also offers concentrated full-spectrum CBD tinctures for those looking for a more traditional CBD format with a powerful entourage effect of benefits. Guys, uh, I got an email alert yesterday, maybe a few hours after arriving here in Vegas, that my backup or my my re-up order of Strava had arrived. Oh, congratulations. So it's just sitting in the lobby of my condo right now. (laughs) And I was thinking like, damn it. I should have just sent it here so that we could all be drinking Strava to stay alert, mm-hmm. but also get some much needed rest while we're here in Vegas. Yeah, well, I, don't think I, I made a mistake there. I don't think you'd be sharing your Strava. Of course I would share. Really? You'd share that? Why would I not share? All right, man, I'm a sharer. I know, but you love I coffee. brought you fresh jam. You do. You did. But you drink, you don't eat. You know, three cans of jam a day. You no, know I, what I'm saying like I you do don't not. do that. But you drink three cups of coffee, bro. Like I didn't only bring. I didn't only buy a supply of like four pods of Strava. I brought. I bought like a box of a Strava. Box of Strava. Yeah. Okay. All right. Because right. it's good. It is. And That's our viewers and our listeners should try it. I and agree. here's a deal for you: CHGO listeners can save 25 percent off their entire purchase. When you use promo code CHGO25, that's 25% off your entire order at StravaCraftCoffee.com when you use code CHGO25 at checkout. Hey, all of my neighbors in my building, don't touch my Strava. <laughs> I'm coming for it. Don't you touch back Strava. Don't you do it. <laughs> CHGO25 at checkout, StravaCraftCoffee.com. Um, all right, guys. So, at, at Will, as you said earlier, you guys, after waiting in that super long line to yeah. get in with your credentials, which, by the way, my GA ticket, I was in a line, but it moved real fast. We got there at noon. Exactly. Yeah. At 12.07, Peck texts us. I'm, <laughs> I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> We're like at the, the very last people of this line. And it just, it literally took an hour. It took an hour. Another man. reason why I gave Dave the second credential. Yeah. I had the premonition to know. He understood. There was going to be a long line of, of media credential waiting, and I was just going to hop right in with all the casual fans. Yeah. Yeah. He was after it. Um, but Proud so when you walked in, you just kind of brushed shoulders with Lonzo Ball as he was walking in? Yeah. Yeah. Well, even before that, uh, we, we talked to uh, Randy Brown. Oh, who, yeah. Who we got who to shout out to Randy with. Brown. I sat close to, to you in the second half. Yeah, who told us that he was a fan of the show. He thought Randy, if you're watching. Watches it. Randy. He said he Thanks thought it was hilarious. That. And 
We appreciate that. Yeah, and and yeah, invite them on. Tell them, yeah, Wesley, anytime, come on, hang Randy. out come anytime. On, come on through, Randy Brown. <laughs> come on through, sir. That'll be a great time. But yeah, we we talked to him earlier, and then uh, yeah, ran into Lonzo because I think he walked past Will first, and I didn't know it. Mm-hmm. But then I just happened to look up and I saw, and I was like, "So what up, man?" He's like, "Oh, what's up, man?" I was like, "Dude, you all right?" He's like, "Yeah, I'm straight. I'm straight. I'm straight." All right. There all right. you go. There's your breaking news. <laughs> Lonzo Ball, yeah, totally fine. <laughs> breaking news from Big Dave, but it was cool because, like, I was telling Will, that's it was, breaking news. It's like <laughs> that's breaking news, Will. That's how you do it. But, but it, it was like NBA summer camp. It yeah. really was, man. Just all these great players, oh, coaches, Woj. and executives, <laughs> right? Oh, you saw Woj? What's up, Mitch Kupchak? <laughs> right. Jerry West, Rod David Thorne. Fisdale, how you doing? You know what I'm saying? Jared Jack, what's going on, bro? You know Birdman? What I mean? Bird, Bird Birdman. Birdman was there? Oh, he is dude. jacked. Dude. Birdman. He, I don't know if you've seen Birdman lately. He looks like Mike Bibby. Really? Dude, tattoos maybe, all over him. Maybe they're working out together. They probably maybe, are. bro. Cut the hair out like his ball, and he put tat- extra tattoos on top of it. And he just looks like he's ready to be a wrestler. Like, for real. That's a, he's not small at all, bro. Like, you don't want to run up on that cat. But, yeah, he was there. Michael Finley, uh, you know, Cube, Mark Cuban, Jason Kidd, all those guys were there. Uh, Christian Wood, uh, we saw as well. Like, it was it was deep, man. Finney Smith, like, it, it was deep. And that was the 1 p.m. game. Yeah. Where, like, not a lot of people are really there yet. Like, yeah. the later games, it's just even more. Even more. Uh, okay. oh, do you have that picture of uh, Zoe uh, sitting courtside? Compliments to our guy, RG, hey. uh, who is snapping picks left and right today at the, at the stadium. Right. And yeah, that was great. Damar yeah. was there. Demar Ayo was there. Patrick was there. Kobe was there. Javante was there. Showing Alonzo out. Alonzo was there. Yep. Everybody we, but uh, but Zach. But, but he's, Zach. He's got some... He's got other stuff going. He's on. got. He, he had a big fat contract to sign. Yeah. He had a, a pregnancy photo shoot to do. Yes, he did. And he got two hundred fifteen million dollars that he needs to do something. <laughs> with. Man. Although, shout out to Zach. I think Dave, you brought this up when we were chatting yesterday. After the Bulls officially announced it and shared the pictures and the videos of Zach sitting down with Mark and AK in what looked like a very nice hotel suite, mm-hmm. signing that contract. The next thing you saw on Zach's Instagram. Were pics and vids of him in the gym. That's what you working saw. on the game. Yeah, man. And I told you, I was like, yeah, damn right. After you sign a guaranteed two hundred fifteen million, the next thing and only acceptable next thing you do is get your butt in that gym and start working out. Yeah, it, it doesn't go like that for all NBA players. It does not. <laughs> Some of them just like, yeah, I'm going to the club, bro. <laughs> yeah, I'm Auto going Porter. to the jewelry store. Auto Porter. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to get a new car. You know what I mean? And I'm not mad at any of those things. Spend your money how you want to spend your money. But you're right. It does it does make you feel better when you're like, this is the guy that got paid, but he's also might be the hardest worker on your team. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that says a lot, man. And I'm just great. I'm just happy he's here, man. It was just great to see all those Bulls there. And even, even when the game was over, they all went to the back. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody just wanted to go talk, mm-hmm. you know, you to the summer league guys. <laughs> you know, like, to have that kind of camaraderie. You know what I mean? It was just a really good vibe, man, just seeing that. It just – just made me feel good. Like, dude, this is the Bulls. Like, this is this is cool shit right here. Yeah, so I appreciate it. Uh, so I was uh, in an Uber on the way back to the house after leaving the stadium, and my Uber driver was clearly just, like, doing laps, picking people up somewhere in Vegas and bringing them to the stadium. Mm-hmm. And he was like, yeah, actually, the woman I just dropped off uh, who just got out of the car right before you hopped in said that she was dating one of the Bulls. And oh, I was like, okay. oh, Cool. Did she say who? And he was like, she did not share that information. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, I was about to be Scoop like, Peck over here. I was like, he's, he's got like, her info on the app. Yeah. Like maybe I can, you know, kind of do some degrees of separation sleuthing and track down our way into a dope ass party later tonight. TMZ Peck was on it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he was on there, man. Guess who's dating? <laughs> he was on top of those things. But yeah, man, it, it was just so much fun to see and. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. Like, Michael Fenwick. Like, it was some people I just really, you know, grew up watching who I admired. You know what yep. I mean? And I'm just like, dude, you. Yo, you. Oh, my God, you. Sean Ryder, Marion, so all that. I Sean Marion. Sean Marion, dude. Yeah. Who had the best outfit I saw of anybody today. Yeah, he was clean. Bro. Looking fresh. He was um, clean. He and was clean. so, of course, also, the the broadcasting crew was in the building. Uh, Richard Jefferson was there. Yeah. Uh, Matt Barnes was there. Yeah. Malika. Um, all, did you guys see that tweet of Malika uh, holding up that uh, ring? I did see that. They're giving rings for the Summer League champions starting this year. 
The yeah. Bulls were five years early. I mean, Seven come years on. Early. When was that? Okay. They also had the <laughs> they also had the summer league trophy out. Like, I, need a in, oh, I saw that. Yeah. I saw that. I and saw they were letting people take pictures with it. I was like, ah, we've got we've yeah, got six like, Larry O'Brien. You guys look like don't. you want a picture with it. I was like, do I look like that? <laughs> <laughs> Bulls fans, you know what I'm saying? We got real ones. No, no, no. But he said, you look like you've been a part of a summer league championship team. That's really what he was saying. He there remembered the Denzel Valley. Go. He saw it dripping off. You always have the right spin. Yeah. We're in the spin zone. <laughs> spin zone, baby. Spin it away. But, dude, like, yeah, that was – I remember that. He's right. Like, it was – wait a minute. But I'm, that just kind of blew my mind, dude. They're giving away rings. Rings like. for Summer League champions. I looked at him and I was like, are these fake diamonds? Like, I, w- would they actually spend money on getting real diamond-encrusted rings? I don't know how to feel about this. Um. Because, you know, I, I don't mind all the pomp and circumstance. I'm like, give them all the trophies, all that stuff. Like, I think they're that plastic. That stuff mean stuff, but. I think you could. I don't know, man. Get these out of, you put like a quarter in and then yeah. one of these comes out in like a little plastic ball. Like, because what does that mean? Like, you yeah. can't get, I mean, what Here, does that I mean, get th- you? That Here is, you go. Here you go. You what, can swipe like, right a couple of times to see different that, angles of it. What's that get you, though? Like, you know what I mean? I'm not. If somebody comes on your show wearing the Summer League green, <laughs> you, I mean. You know no, what I'm saying? You nobody. Might. There are going to be guys I mean, who aren't in the league who have one Although, I was going to say, but you know what? We were kind of joking about him yesterday. I would not put it past Denzel to be like, oh, they got summer league rings now? Let me get one. Make me one. <laughs> retroactive? Oh, yeah, please. I would like a retroactive summer league champion ring, please. So that I can put something next to my didn't go platinum or anywhere close to it album <laughs> record that i had framed by myself wow it's got the thomas and max center unlv in yeah. that joint the detail the, on this the thing. attention to detail wow the date oh my god the detail is crazy <laughs> old bug this is the comments that how about a didn't miss the team bus ring too <laughs> <laughs> oh my oh gosh my god man. Are they going to get a trophy for the two teams that got there? Will they get a trophy, too? Because I don't know, man. <laughs> Paul, Paul in the comments said, Marco's getting a ring. Uh, <laughs> Marco yeah. is officially on MVP watch. Dude, he is. He is. I'm man. not even joking. I mean, no, that's true. 27 and 13 for a team that's 1 and 0 right now. And a game winner, a game tire to send it to OT and a game winning Truly. shot. That's impressive. It was a free man. throw, but it was a shot. Who are they naming it after? Oh, Camp, Denzel. Camby Denzel. <laughs> Camby Denzel? Um, who, who I don't know who, who scored the first bucket in summer league history. I guess that's uh, just name it after Jerry West. He was there watching. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, coolest jersey you guys saw? Oh man, the Boozer one was the funniest. Oh, I mean, it, Boozer can't be the winner, dude. I didn't see that many. Yeah, uh, the Boozer is the one that stands. I wasn't out really to me. looking out for him today. I saw I saw Brandon Roy jersey. Really you respected saw a Brandon that. Brandon Roy jersey. Yep, respected wow, that. Bro. I saw uh, a woman wearing a a t shirt that said Hallelujah and a picture of Luca wow. going like this. Wow! Uh, I was like, oh man. I saw a guy with a Utah Jazz jersey on that says Trade Spider. Wow! <laughs> and, and he had he's holding up a sign that said Trade Spider. He oh wrote it out. Right. Book. I saw a guy with a Lakers Lonzo Ball jersey. I did see that as well. Interesting. So I saw that going on too. So still holding on to that one. Still huh? holding on, man. Summer league. When when did he ball out? It was in that summer league, man. That's when he got his thing going. So yeah, it was a couple out there. I'm sure there are going to be some more crazy, creative ones, man. It, oh, it was a Mavs fan with the big, huge Mavs medallion. Oh, I saw that. Saw he was that on guy? the jumbo trial yeah, at dude, one point, oh God, losing dude. his mind. Yo, he was, I was so like, wild. Buddy, it's summer league. Like, let's, <laughs> let's take it down a notch. It's season four, baby. Oh man, yeah, he was charged. He was charged. So yeah, it was I, a lot of cool fans. I though. did wait. So the did the dude wearing the trade spider jazz jersey was he wearing one of the new retro like purple with the mountains jerseys? Yes, because I did see one of those. It was that. It was he was it was two of them. I, it was yeah. the guy in front of him wearing one, and then it was the guy holding the sign was the one in the back. Right, he was holding. Speaking the sign. of jerseys, where did this Pippin jersey come from? Have I seen that before? Where do you think it came from? <laughs> Look I at thought this you dude. brought. I thought you brought. That one, that one, and this one. I didn't see that and one. And I also brought that one. Yeah. I brought four jerseys. We're wow. in Vegas for four days. I needed four jerseys. All right. There you go. Keep telling me you're the most thorough human being on the face Look of the earth. Look at that. Earth, I've man. never seen a jersey like that. Pretty dope, right? It is a dope one. Black and gold, and the gold sparkles Glittery. a little bit. Yeah, I remember mean, yeah. when you showed it to uh, me. I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, shout out, get that. Shout out to Mitchell and Ness. Mitchell and Ness, baby. Who, after I pay my mortgage and my <laughs> utilities, get all get of all my money. All money. Get that peck paper. <laughs> it's, I mean, hat, Mitchell and Ness. Yeah. Obviously. Um, yeah, so, like, I like those jazz jerseys. 
but the uh, the poor jazz fans, those other the new jazz, ones. yeah, that yeah. just are the ugliest things that they aren't even good enough for just being basic summer league jerseys. Yeah. Although it was funny, uh, our our great Kale here before you guys got home was like, man, even the Bulls summer league jerseys are clean. I'm like, yeah, dude. Yeah. Just it's so simple. You just don't do. Don't mess work. with the classic. It's nothing else to do, man. It's like this is dope. We will continue to do this. Yeah. <laughs> like it's nothing else to do, man. It's cool. Like when it's so iconic and so global like that, you know, you really don't have to really mess with it. Because I think that's the main ones that Matt has issue when you mess with it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Those are the ones he really has just the main issue with. Like those like. ugly ass bright mm-hmm. turquoise blue with the big blue logo they are so from dope. a few years ago. They are so dope. Hideous. <laughs> so dope, man. Burn, I love those. Gather all of them and burn them. <laughs> <laughs> no, gather them and send them to me. Because, I, man, those are so ill. The hat was ill. The hoodie was we ill. We could do a snake draft of best jerseys one day. Oh, oh. yeah. Cool. Let, like let Dave go Mark first. Mark he'll, 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 he'll waste his first pick on trash. No, I know it'll be there, so I won't have to pick it. <laughs> it's all about the value. The value That's right. play. That's right, man. It'll be right there, baby. <laughs> all right. So before we get out of here, just looking ahead a, a, a little bit to what we have on deck. We got the Knicks on Sunday. Okay. Um, that's going to be a, I believe, Bing bong. an hour later tip off than today. Cool. Uh, at the other, uh, it'll be at whatever Cox the other Pavilion. one, Cox Pavilion. Mm-hmm. Anything in particular you guys want to see moving from game one to game two? Anybody that maybe you didn't see enough from today that you want or somebody on that Knicks roster that you're going to have an eye on? I kept um, talking about Maker. Uh, mm-hmm. When Will and I are watching the game, he's big. He's huge. He is massive. But he is too massive to not have a presence. Yeah. And he did How not- big do you think he is? I would guess 6'11, 7 foot. Damn, we we right guessed on. like 7'3. Yeah, three. we were like 7'2, seven yeah. 7'3. Seven seven he looks enormous. Yeah. And he was like 6'11, I think you said, right? Yeah. 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 But I, I really want to see him have more of a presence out there because I. I didn't. I didn't like the fact he was like the biggest dude on the floor, but would disappear. And it was other guys who were either near his size or a little slow, little shorter, who were stronger and tougher in the paint on Dallas. And yeah. Shout out to Dallas. They are extremely well coached, man. Like their defense and yeah, their rotations. Some of the rotations were like, wow, my god, this is summer league. <laughs> Yo, man, that was amazing. Their communication. And I kept saying, I was like, dude, they're always talking. Like everybody's talking and speaking, man. Like that's that's how you play great defense. They did a great job. Um, but, yeah, I want to see that from uh, Maker. I just want to see him know that he's big <laughs> out there when he's on the floor because he would go up for layups where it should have been dunks. And, yeah, I just want to see a little more of that from him. And I want to just see Marco continue to do what he did in this game one. You know what I mean? I don't want it to be that fluky thing as, as people would get on him like, see? I told right. you. Like, I'd, I'd like to see it continue uh, and him pick up another double-double and, yeah, just keep that train rolling and, you know, see what Daylon Terry can do and see if it, he's more settled down uh, when he's out there uh, playing those longer periods of time. Yeah, I think I'm going to write about it after this, but I, I want to see him continue to put pressure on the basket um, and try to weaponize his passing a little bit more. Talking about Daylon, right? I'm talking about Daylon. Mm-hmm. Um, Marco, I just want him to do exactly what he just did, like every game for the rest of his life. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the Knicks are cool. They have kind of a fun G, uh, summer league roster. They've got Miles McBride and Quentin Grimes, their two picks from last year. Right. Uh, they've got Gene Montero, who was with the overtime elite, did not get drafted, but he's got some hype around him. Uh, uh, Jericho Tre- Sims is Trevor on their Keels team. Trevor Duke. Keels is on their team. Yep. So they've got some fun guys. Micah Potter, he can play a little bit. Um, so, uh, yeah, it'll be fun to watch just like some of the younger sort of random guys around the league. That's really the best part about Summer League. And they got a Sims with one M and they got a Sims with two M's. So they got a little bit of, you know, the, the Bulls having two Samsons from a couple of years ago. Oh, remember, remember, when, remember, Dave? Remember when the Bulls had two Why Samsons? Why do you do this to me, Doug? <laughs> Why? Why? Why do you bring this to me? Two Samsons! The return of Jakar. Jakar! Jakar! Uh, Why? Meanwhile, uh, Dontavius in the comments said that there are people on Twitter calling Simonovic the king of Montenegro. Wow. <laughs> I love Bulls fans, man. That that much hype, huh? Look, Bulls fans are the best. <laughs> all right. They're, they're, uh, what I love about them, I've said it a million times, there's no middle ground with Bulls fans. You're either all in or you're all out. Right. You know what I'm saying? But there's no middle ground because the middle ground is kind of where logic you know, he resigns. No. Right. Absolutely not. We either think he's the greatest ever or he is the worst basketball player on the face of the earth. There is no middle ground for the Bulls. 
But we try to be that here for all the Bulls nations, and we appreciate y'all watching this, man. All Seriously. right, guys, we got to get out of here so we can let Kale here go catch the Nuggets game. Yes. He needs to go. He can't he's wait. Got Nuggets to watch. Shout yes, out does. to him for uh, rocking it with us again here. Um, we aren't sure yet if we're going to do a show tomorrow. Mm-hmm. We're gonna we're gonna see how it goes. We'll see. We've got some all city. Olympics to play shenanigans. We've got some Vegas shenanigans to get up to. Yeah. And uh, we'll definitely be back Sunday to do another post game show after the Sunday game. Yeah. We'll see. We're probably going to throw some kind of content up on our various social medias tomorrow. True. So True. make sure you're following CHO underscore bulls and all of our personal accounts. And, and what's the know, hashtag? Uh, hashtag CHGO in Vegas. Mm-hmm. Follow along. Um, we'll see. Maybe we'll hop on and do a quick little show. Maybe we'll save it for Sunday. Um, Vegas is calling. You know what else is calling? That freaking pool in the backyard. I need to post this episode and get in there immediately. <laughs> it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Order. Then in what are order. we waiting for? What are we waiting for? Right. be good. We're out. <laughs> <laughs> for Kale, for the goat, for Big Dave, I'm Peck. Thanks, as always, for tuning in, for watching and listening. Subscribe to the CHGO Sports YouTube channel if you aren't already. We'll catch you around the corner. See you, be good. Yes, sir. <laughs>